In order to know my story, you need to know my roots. I was born and still live in a small town called Jackson, Michigan. The one-time home to seven New York Central lines, Jackson is a mere shell of what it once was. With the golden age of railroading long over for the Michigan line, it still retains some artifacts of a once marvelous era. Still in service is the oldest continuously used passenger rail station in America, along with the former Michigan Central Railroad shops at Jackson Yard. Six Amtrak trains and the occasional Norfolk Southern local can be seen rolling through town. My first exposure to railroading was as a young boy. My grandfather would often tell me stories about his father, a Southern Railway fireman and later turned engineer from Birmingham, Alabama. My great-grandfather had over 45 years of service with the railroad and even participated in the original Southern Railway steam program shortly before his retirement in 1978. My grandfather sparked my interest in trains as a toddler. Little did I know, I'd still be fascinated years later. Just see Granddaddy. He's sitting in his chair and just turned the engine off. Now I'm up in the train. Alright, we're inside the engine, Dad. How you feel like going in on your last run? I don't know how I do feel. I don't know how you do feel. It's been a good trip. Don't, good trip, don't we? Just don't realize it. It's uh it's the last. At the age of 13, I started filming trains. The footage in this very first scene was recorded on a family vacation to Pennsylvania. With the help of my parents, I bought my first camera and started a YouTube channel that summer. Through middle school, my grandmother would often take me trackside to capture trains for my videos. I wanted to share my passion with the world, and YouTube seemed to be the perfect format. Video allowed me to relive my experiences, and YouTube allowed me to broadcast myself to others, sharing the same passion. 
I was lucky to have my grandmother so involved with my hobby. She enjoyed trains just as much as I do. If only she were still here today to see how far I've come. These were the early years, and I wouldn't trade them for anything. I started Delay in Block Productions my freshman year of high school and began to dream up my goal, producing the best railroad videos available on the internet. It took me years to get to where I am today, but this is where it all started trackside along the Michigan line with a hundred dollar Sony camera and my grandmother as my chauffeur. Building an audience on YouTube isn't always easy, but after posting this footage of Amtrak's Wolverine accident at Leone, Michigan in 2012, my channel started to grow. Going viral, the footage of the wreck received around 10,000 views the first day it was online. That was a huge number compared to the three or 400 views per day that I was used to. No fatalities occurred in this wreck, but it put the Michigan line out of service for a few days. Another video that garnered a huge success and an invitation into YouTube's partnership program was that of the world's worst maintained railroad, the Maumee and Western of Defiance, Ohio. This short line railroad is now owned by Pioneer and is in much better condition, but at the time it was in some seriously poor shape. In just one month, the video received over 60,000 views and YouTube took notice, asking me to participate in their partnership program in the spring of 2012. YouTube's partnership program allowed me to invest in new equipment through the ad revenue on my channel. They liked the theme and the consistency in my content. The partnership program allowed me to start a legitimate company, and I decided to purchase an aerial drone to enhance the content being featured on my channel. To my knowledge, Delay in Block was the first railfan YouTube channel to ever feature aerial video via drone. This feat alone brought in thousands of new subscribers and garnered the attention of a certain nonprofit railroad organization from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Indeed, things were looking good for my small production company, but I had no idea the opportunities that laid ahead of me. In this hobby and the industry, we all have mentors. For me, that mentor would help me mature and find success in pursuing film production as a career opportunity. Kelly Lynch, the now Vice President of the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society, took me under his wing, encouraging me to attend film school and even offered me an opportunity of a lifetime, assisting him in the production of Fort Wayne's digital media projects. Through Kelly, I was offered opportunities I never thought possible. Because of my work with Kelly at Fort Wayne, I built relationships with various other contacts in the industry, gaining me special access to steam locomotives on the main line. 
thus allowing me to produce even better content for my large and ever-growing subscriber base. Train lovers gathered in Buffalo over the weekend for the historic running of steam locomotive number 765. Among the fans was a five-year-old boy named Gavin Steele. Railroads inspire us for many reasons, but for some, they are the very thing that makes life worth living. Enter Gavin Steele, the only child to be diagnosed with both cystic fibrosis and DeGeorge syndrome. Connected through social media, Gavin's father, Jason, reached out to me in 2014. In his message, Jason told me that Gavin loved watching my YouTube videos during his lengthy hospital stays and medical treatments. The long, sometimes painful breathing treatments that Gavin uses to clean his lungs can last for over 30 minutes, and my railroad videos helped him pass the time trains for some reason have always captivated him and, and kept him going. He's gone through a lot. He had open heart surgery when he was six weeks old. Gavin and Drayton, you know, have the same passion, the same love for trains and have finally come together and with this nickel plate road 765, a very historic large steam train. To see him growing up and literally being a little warrior, it's, it's just really inspiring and the fact that what I do helps him get through all the literal crud that he has to go through in life. It, it kind of makes everything that I do worth it. Hi, buddy. Can you say hi? It's not going to make any loud noises right now, so you don't have to hold your ears. I'm going to be the engineer today on that steam engine. I'm driving it. Put it there, buddy. You got to shake my hand. Shake his hand. Shake his elbow. <laughs> I got an idea. What do you say, instead of just chasing the train, why don't you get on the train and ride the train? No. Yeah. yeah. You want to ride on the train? <laughs> yeah. Can you say thank you very much? Can you give him a hug? You're welcome, buddy. Give him a hug. I'll give you a hug if you're having to keep your hands up. That's fine. <laughs> thank you so much. You <laughs> will. Through my relationship with the Fort Wayne Railroad Historical Society, Gavin and Jason were able to ride behind Nickel Plate Road 765 from Buffalo to Corning, New York on the Erie Limited. This was the first real train ride Gavin had ever been on, and what better way to experience it than behind a steam locomotive. After riding behind the 765, our story was told by several local news stations. Through a GoFundMe campaign and promotional coverage by the news stations, my subscribers learned about Gavin and were inspired to help raise enough money for Gavin and his family 
to attend Operation North Pole, an event that would change my life forever. Oh, the train idea was real easy. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have a plane any longer, you know, when we left United, so we needed a transportation system to get to the North Pole. The first year that we did it, we just used a regular revenue train. So we were among the rest of the passengers that were on the metro train, and we were just in one car. Operation North Pole is a Chicagoland nonprofit organization that gives children with life threatening illnesses and special needs a train ride to a winter wonderland. The event is put on by Metra and Union Pacific, along with hundreds of volunteers that include local fire, EMS, and police first responders. Since 2014, I have had the honor of producing the official event videos for the organization. It's an incredible experience to partake in Operation North Pole, and I would encourage anyone interested in helping to volunteer or donate. You won't regret it. Since starting Delay in Block Productions in 2011, my YouTube channel has grown immensely. When I first started out, I had no idea where my hobby would take me. After six years of shooting, editing, narrating, and writing, my YouTube channel has become somewhat of a hub for online railroad media. With over 31,000 YouTube subscribers, over 20,000 Facebook followers, and a presence on Instagram and Twitter, Delay in Block has become a brand, much like Pentrex in the 80s and 90s. In this new age of digital media, you don't buy anything to view the program. You simply sit through a short advertisement before the video plays in your internet browser, which helps content creators like me earn a living, pay for school, or purchase new equipment for making videos. And not only that, subscriber feedback and instant communication allows us to create even better content. Subscribers expect regular video uploads throughout the month, and often give feedback on different railroads they would like to see featured on my channel. Loyal subscribers who want to contribute even further support Delay in Block through crowdfunding at Patreon.com. Simple $1 subscriptions help me create premium content, like my Hoosier Keystone digital download on DelayInBlock.com. Through this new social media age of the hobby and industry, I've met some of my best friends who I otherwise wouldn't have had an opportunity to meet, all because of this wonderful thing called Facebook. It's no telling where the next five years will lead me, but so far I've enjoyed every bit of it, from my first experiences trackside with my grandmother to my recent projects with the Everett Railroad and the Lake State Railway, I've come a long way and will continue pursuing the big goal that I had set in high school, to produce the best railroad videos on the internet. I'd like to thank the Center of Railroad Photography and Art for inviting me to speak at this year's event. It's an honor to be here, and I've enjoyed sharing my story with you. If you'd like to see more of my work or have a business inquiry, visit www.delayinblock.com for more information.